Okay guys, so we're gonna go over problems six through nine for the ACT practice test. I apologize in advance, I'm not feeling the best, but I got a comment, I think yesterday or another day on one of my videos, and he basically just thanked me for um, making the videos and then he told me to keep going. So that's what I'm gonna do, even though I'm not feeling my best. So if we could just keep going, all of us together, no matter how you're feeling today, if you're feeling a little bit stressed, if you're feeling a little bit tired, Let's go ahead and let's do this. And I'm gonna make sure that I explain these in the simplest way possible. So let's go ahead and get started. It says, a boat departs Portobello, Texas, traveling to an oil rig. The oil rig is located nine miles east and 12 miles north of the, boat's, de the boat's departure point. About how many miles is the oil rig from the departure point? Okay, so we're talking about north and east. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a little compass. So north and south, west and east. Okay, so it says it is departs. Okay, so this is where the departure point is. So I'm going to just write departure. I'm just going to draw a picture for this. And then it says it's located nine miles east. So first it goes nine miles east. So it's this way. So nine miles and it's east because you see how it's going that way is east okay and then it says 12 miles north so then from this point it's going to go up 12 miles okay and again you go up to go north so now it's asking the distance between the departure point and the end point which is at the oil rig so here's the oil rig so if you look at that, we just drew a right triangle, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Pythagorean theorem in order to figure out what this measurement would be. So the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a is gonna be the nine miles, so nine squared. b is gonna be the 12 miles, 12 squared is equal to c squared, okay? So nine times nine is 81. 12 times 12 is 144 is equal to c squared. 81 plus 144 is 225 is going to be equal to c squared. In order to get rid of that square, we need to do the square root on both sides. So what happens is the square root and the square cancel each other out and you're just left with c. And the square root of 225 is 15. So it's 15 miles from the departure point directly to the oil rig. So the answer is going to be H. And what really helped us here is that we drew a picture. So just never be afraid to draw a picture when you're taking your test on your scrap paper. It doesn't really matter what other people see or what other people think. It's just about being able to get the right answer. So let's go ahead and go to question number seven now. So it says in the figure below, angle ABC is congruent to angle DFE, angle BAC, is congruent to FDE and D and F or an A and B. Okay, so that's a lot of information. All it's really saying is that they have congruent angles. So that just means that this larger angle, or this lar larger triangle, excuse me, this larger triangle is going to be congruent to this smaller triangle. So they should have the same ratio of sides. So if we look at this smaller triangle, the one side is 12, the bottom side is six. And if we go ahead and make a ratio, then this longer side is 20. So we're gonna put the 20 on top. And this bottom side is what we don't know yet. So we gotta figure out what the bottom side is. So there's a couple ways of doing this, but the easiest way for me, and it may just be simplest as well, is the ratio is tw how do you get from 12 to six? I just divide that by two. So how do you get from one side to the other? If you divide 20 by two, that X should be equal to 10. So the length of this entire side should be equal to 10. But they're not asking us what's the length of the entire side. They just want us to know what the length of AD is. So they just want what this measurement is. So how do we find that? Well. There's this portion, let me use a different color, this portion of the line, which is six. So we'd have to do 10 minus six, and that's equal to four. 
and then there's two sides that are left over and they're the same measurement. So you would divide that by two and you would get two for both of those pieces. So this is, let me erase some of this just so that you can see. This is six, this is two, and this is two. And when you add them all together, six plus two plus two, it equals that 10. So if they ask us how much is AD, AD is equal to two. So I know I did a lot there and I don't want you to feel lost. I don't want you to feel overwhelmed because this was one of the simplest problems. When they're using these terms, when you see this, that just means congruent. And because the angles of both of these triangles are congruent, you see that here as well, then you can just assume that these triangles are also with the same rate or ratio. So if it's 12 over six and it's 40 over X, just figure out, okay, this is 12 divided by two is equal to six. So if you wanna find the corresponding length, you would do 40 divided by two and it would be 20. So no matter what numbers you get, just, just keep in mind that if it's congruent triangles, that means that they have the same ratio. And if they have the same ratio, just figure out, okay, what is the ratio of the first triangle? And then apply that to the second triangle and you can figure out what one of the missing lengths are. But then how I went even further is that even though I found what the entire length is, they didn't ask me for the entire length. They asked me what this amount would be. So when I was looking at the line, I saw, okay, this portion of it is six. So I did 10 minus six. But then I realized there's two portions left over. So I divided that number by two and I got the answer too. Again, I'm gonna provide more practice problems so that we can go over these types of problems more. But in the meantime, go to act.org, practice these practice problems, try to see if you could do it on your own, and then come back to me and we'll hopefully in a few days or within the next couple of weeks, we'll have more practice problems to do together. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go to question number eight. It says, which of the following is a factor of the polynomial 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. All right, so the way that we do this is we have to factor this. And the way that you factor it is by you multiply the first and the last amount. So you would do 2 times negative 5, and the answer is negative 10. So you need to find two numbers that when they multiply out, they equal negative 10. But when they add, they add to the middle amount, which is negative three. So what two numbers multiply to get negative 10 to add to equal negative three? Okay, so I would say negative five and two. Negative five times positive two equals negative 10 and negative five plus two is equal to negative three. Okay, so now that we found what our pieces are, we go ahead and we put them in the middle. So 2x squared plus 2x minus 5x, and then we're going to go ahead, minus 5. So all we did is we replaced this middle bit with the factored part. And if you add those two together, they still equal negative 3x, but now they're separated so that we can go ahead and factor. So now we're going to go ahead and factor this part, and then we're going to factor this part. So let's go ahead and factor the first part. Is there anything that you can take out the greatest common factor between 2x squared and 2x? You can take out a 2x, and then what would you be left with? x plus one. Okay, so now let's go ahead and factor this. So we can go ahead and take out a negative five, and you'd be left with x plus one, perfect. Okay, so this and this should be the same. So we're gonna go ahead and bring that down, x plus one. And then we're gonna take everything that's remaining and put it in the second one, 2x minus five. So if you were to factor 2x squared minus 3x minus five, it'd be x plus one times 2x minus five. So now they're asking which one of these options over here are either this or this. So not the first one, not the second one, it's the third one. 2x minus 5 because that is one of the factors, 2x minus 5. 
All right, well done, you guys. I'm probably going to get more practice problems for this as well. I usually like factoring ones that are like x squared plus 10x plus 25. I prefer when there's no um, number in front of that first one, but we still have to practice it because it's a skill that they expect you to know on the ACT. So I may come up with a little practiced, practice problems or like a little practice test that we can practice those types of problems. All right, so you guys are doing so well. You haven't given up. I'm so proud of you. Um, let's keep going. And this is going to be the last problem that we go ahead and review today. So it's just let's go ahead and write these out. Plus x plus 136 plus 1. Okay, so it says, what is the x, the second term in the geometric series, 1 over 4 plus x plus 1 over 36 plus 1 over 108 plus. No, in a geometric series, the ratio of any term to the following term is constant. Okay, so we're just trying to figure out what the pattern is for these. So because this to this, you can't really see what's happening because this is just an unknown value, I would figure out what happens from here to here. So 1 over 36 and 1 over 108. And the way that you figure it out is, okay, what do you have to do in order to go from 36 to 108? 36 times blank equals 108. So the way that you can do that on your calculator is just type in 108 divided by 36, and you'd end up getting the number 3. So 36 times 3 is equal to 108. So let's go ahead and try to multiply these out by three to see if the pattern continues because it says the pattern is constant. So between each one of these, if this is multiplied by three, this should also be multiplied by three and this should be multiplied by three. So let's go ahead and give it a, a shot. So if we multiply that by three, we would get one over 12. And let's see if that works out. Multiply that by three, it would be one over 36, perfect and you multiply that by three and it's 108. So the missing value is one over 12. So anytime you're looking for a ratio, a rate, just figure out, okay, how did they go from one value to the next? If you multiplied by three, then go ahead and check that out. Let's try and multiply everything by three, see if it works out. In this case it did. So then our answer is going to be C. All right, guys, you did such a great job. Again, I'm sorry for not feeling my best today. Um, but sometimes doing math helps me just to feel a little bit better. Knowing that I'm helping makes me feel a little bit better. Um, and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next one.